right, so what I'm going to do to start this is to take a piece of hardwood, a fairly straight piece, and this is what I'm going to form my neck out of. What I'm going to do is uh, start to square this end off so that it'll fit securely inside this box. Once I make a little cut out of one side here, it'll fit securely in there. And then uh, on the other end, I'm going to start to form my, uh, my headstock. And then all the way in between, I'll start to flatten this out here. Now the first step is going to be to strip the bark on this. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to run a slit all the way down here and then just peel the bark back and I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. Alright, here you can see the two cuts I've made. Now on either side of those cuts I'm going to start taking away some of this material to level out the headstock as well as the fingerboard and uh, leave this remaining as my nut. Before I got completely done with this, I thought it would be a good idea to show you exactly how this looks while I'm working on it. You can see I have leveled off the front of the headstock here, as well as a little bit of the back. I have uh, chopped down the nut just a little bit. I've made it so it's got a flat top rather than the uh, round top left by the curvature of the piece of wood. Now the easiest way I've found to shave this is to put this between your legs while you're sitting on a chair and just uh, shave layer by layer, putting all your weight on it like that. Alright, so here is the guitar neck, almost totally shaped. What I'm going to do now is to uh, tap the holes with a drill bit in the head for the uh, tuning pegs, and then I will start working on this box to uh, accept the neck. I want to get all the work done on the neck before I start cutting the box, just in case I make a mistake and have to start over again. I haven't uh, already fit the box to fit a broken neck, so I will go ahead and tap those holes and get right back with you. Okay, the holes are now drilled in the headstock, and you can see I've staggered them a little bit so that when I put the strings on them, they're going to sit at uh, spaces from one another on the neck. So now the next task is going to be to level out the bottom of uh, the neck towards the front just to the length of the cigar box so that it sits level on the bottom. Not to the extent that this has been sheared off, just enough to make that flat. I'm also now going to cut my hole into the cigar box so the neck can be inserted. Alright, so now I have leveled the back of the neck here and I have cut out the hole in the cigar box. Unfortunately, I've made a stupid mistake and put the hole on the wrong side so that when this is in and this is flipped down, in order for a right-handed player to use the guitar, it's going to have to be upside down. So what I'm going to do to fix that is uh, this lid is just held on by the sticker that uh, has the detailing on it on each side, so I'm just going to slice that and uh, relay it the other way so it's going to be right side up. Now the next step is going to be to take the neck and glue that flat back right to the inside of the cigar box just like that. So I'm going to lay a bead of glue all the way along the back side. For this I'm using Gorilla Glue, but you can use any strong glue that bonds well to wood. Alright, so now this neck is set in place and we're just waiting for the glue to dry to continue on. I've taken the liberty to do the next step off camera because it's quite simple. What I've done is to take a tiny piece of wood and glue it right to the front of the neck here. And the glue's actually not quite dry on there yet. Now the reason I've done that is because as this lid sits on there, it only has support on either side. And you need a little support at the front just to give it a little extra strength. The reason I don't have one of these on the back is you want that side to be as free floating as possible so that it's free to vibrate from the strings. Now the next step is going to be to drill four holes because I have four pegs up here. I'm going to drill four holes right back through the back of the cigar box and right into the base of the neck. And these holes are where some finishing nails such as these are going to go and they are what are going to hold the back end of your strings in. Okay, so you can see those four nails drilled into the holes. So now it's time to move on to something else. Now is as good a time as any to install the internal electronics. Rather than using a pickup in this guitar, I'm just going to install a microphone. And the microphone I'm using is just going to be a speaker, which is going to be soldered to a 
quarter inch jack input, this one here. Those two leads you see there are going to be soldered right to the two leads you can see on the side of this microphone. And uh, a hole will be drilled through the back of this box and this will be installed right through there. Now you can see I've soldered my speaker onto our quarter inch jack right here. But now what needs to happen is I need to mount the speaker to the underside of our soundboard. So what I'm going to do to mount the speaker to the inside of the soundboard right here is take four little pieces of wood and arrange them in a square that this speaker will just barely sit into. And what that'll do is allow the speaker to be mounted without rubbing the delicate cone on anything as it vibrates. Alright, so I've glued these pieces of wood to our soundboard. They're nice and stuck there. And I'm now going to take some hot glue and glue the speaker right onto those mounts. Alright, so take a look. I now have the speaker on our soundboard here. I also have the jack installed, which just requires to drill through the wall and just crank the nut down. Now it's time to work on the tuning pegs. Well, you can see here I have gone ahead and skipped to the end, and I have finished this guitar off camera. Now, the steps that I skipped were to install the tuning pegs, which they fit right in through those holes there, and then there's a few holes that you got to tap for screws on the sides, but it's really, really simple. And uh, once you order your tuners, you'll know exactly how to do it just by looking at them. But yeah, those just slip right in, and then uh, a top piece fits right down into those holes. Now's a good time to mention that uh, when you drill the holes for the neck, uh, for the tuning pegs in the neck, rather, um, be sure to drill them so that w they will fit the tuners you selected. Now, the only other things that I have done is I have finished up our nut right here. Now, what I did was in that little elevated piece of wood there, I cut a little groove, and I made that so that a bolt would sit right in there. And the grooves in the bolt help the strings to stay in place, which is really nice. It's also very cheap. Now on the bottom, for the bridge, I have another bolt with a nut on one side. And as you can see, that fits just right, and the strings sit right on there. Now I've tuned this to an open D. Open D tuning. That's D, A, D, F sharp. And now it's just time to show you a little demo of the guitar.